just the tip. Howdy, Wonder Hussy here. Slept in this ditch last night <laughs> in my car outside Fallon, Nevada. I got into town late. I just needed a quiet place to spend the night unmolested. And this ditch certainly served that purpose. It's not the most scenic campsite in the world, but apparently there's something very interesting at the top of that mountain. So I'm gonna shut my rig, shut my mouth, and go check it out. Okay, I think we're as close as we're gonna get to the top of the mountain. I think I maybe see a sort of trail. Well, nothing for it but to start hiking. Boy, there's not much trail at all here. I mean, I saw that one little rock cairn, which by the way, I understand there's some kind of a environmental movement against rock cairns. You know, those little stacked rocks you see indicating which way to go to stay on the trail. When a trail is not well marked, I guess some people feel like they disrupt the natural environment. Like, come on, I consider myself an environmentalist. I know, I drive a gas guzzler, but still. But come on guys, stacking freaking rocks. Oh gosh, look how high we've already hiked. My car looks like this tiny dinghy in a sea of sagebrush. Wow, what a desolate landscape. Over there is a, uh, on the other side of that dry lake bed is US 50. That's right, the loneliest road in America runs right past us. I told you it was desolate. And then on the other side of the road in the very far distance is the Fallon Naval Air Station, AKA the Top Gun Academy. That's right, that's where they train all the Top Gun pilots for the Navy aviation program. I don't know what they call it, but I definitely got buzzed by more than a few fighter jets this morning at my campsite. So when we get to the top of this mountain, in addition to what we're going to see, we should have a pretty interesting view of the Naval Air Station and hopefully get another flyover. I think we're almost there. I can see old glory a flapping in the breeze. And that's a sure sign that my target lies just ahead. Uh, I don't know why I get so excited hiking to these places. I mean, this thing is marked on Google Maps. It's no secret. It's just, you know, it's hard to get to. And so it's kind of exciting, like a treasure hunt, when you finally make it there. <laughs> Uh, or maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a big old nerd. So you might be able to see as we approach the site. Well, first of all, you can see we're walking on very rough, rough volcanic terrain. This is not an easy hike up here. And I never did see a real trail. So if you want to try to come up here, you better make sure you're fit as a friggin' fiddle. But anyway, as we approach the site, you can see there's all kinds of crazy stuff up here. And that makes me wonder, how these guys got this stuff up here? You know, like whoa, these two little wheels. What are these? Are these like from a kid's toy? Yeah, they sure are. It's an axle from some plastic kid's car. But then you can see there's a lot of uh, aviation detritus scattered about. Now I'm no aviation aviatrix, I suppose. Uh, nor do I know much about aviation, but that looks like a piece 
off some kind of aircraft or that certainly looks like a piece of an airplane as do those and that and that matter of fact there's all kinds of aircraft debris scattered all over this hilltop which according to google maps is called sar hill my understanding is that sar stands for search and rescue which there's search and rescue organizations everywhere that go out and <laughs> help rescue stranded hikers and idiots like me but this monument is to i think a particular search and rescue group that's somehow affiliated with the naval air weapons station i think uh, at least that's i don't know somehow i got that impression maybe from something i read online anyway let's poke around all the stuff up here and then maybe it'll give us an answer okay so the site is located on what is essentially a little tiny dry lake bed on the top of this mesa so it's basically a circular site and i'm gonna go ahead and start over here by the american flag that we saw flapping in the breeze and let's see there's some artifacts or some stones under it that have messages on them look at this p-o-w-m-i-a that's for the missing in action prisoners of war you are not forgotten Oh, and then it says ATC Kermit Keith Haythorn, December 26, 1951. Oh, and is that his military ID number, 6543643? I mean, I don't think it's his phone number. Well, I wonder if this poor guy was taken prisoner or went missing in action the day after Christmas, 1951. Oh, was that like the Korea War? Oh, man. This poor guy. And there's a rock next to that. Unfortunately, this one is getting kind of faded from the sun. It's painted Sean Sullivan, AKA Sully. Unfortunately, the rest of the information is worn away. Let's see, the next rock says HMC George William Piercy. KIA, doesn't that mean killed in action? Well, it says P-O-W-M-I-A, but then it says KIA 23 October, 1983. Oh gosh, what was going on? in 83 was that like the oh my gosh i don't even know what 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 war was the thing in lebanon oh god that's that's terrible and then there's like some there's some little like straps from an old backpack i wonder if this is from somebody's service backpack oh huh? let's see there's one more painted rock here this one says oh gosh this one is so worn away i can hardly read any of it telsco Iraq? Does that say something about Iraq? Oh man, so it's not that old. It says February 2016. Oh man. Just terrible. And then there's like a pile of paracord at the base of it. I don't know, maybe that's something that came from his backpack. Very sobering. But it's nice that some folks came up here and erected a what looks to be almost brand new American flag. I mean, it's in great shape. The halyard, is that what you call the rope, is in great shape. And then there's even these little like solar lights on all sides of it. So I guess this flag is lit up at night, which is interesting because I did see two lights, well, glowering at me, it felt like, uh, from the mountaintop all last night. It was kind of creepy. It almost felt like the eyes of a beast looking at me. And I think I was camped just right back there. How about that? Maybe I saw two of the lights for this flag. Well, golly, if I would have known that's what it was, I wouldn't have been so freaked out. Then look here, here's part of an old Jeep. In memory of AOC Charles Robert Thacker Jr. U.S. Navy, right? Isn't that what that is? Look at that boss logo the Navy has with that little gold anchor. I love that. Oh, look, here's a piece of a hydraulic something or other. No, golly. I mean, I guess it's okay to touch this stuff. Holy cow. I mean, I wonder if people bring pieces of crashed planes up here. Do not lube. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, you know what? Before I leave this flagpole, I did want to note that there's some names written in the cement. Carl, looks like Rod and Billy. So Carl, Rod, and Billy, I'm presuming, are the ones who erected this flag back in October of 2009, and they cemented it in real well. This flag ain't going nowhere, and they're probably the ones who come up here and put that new flag up too. That's pretty cool. I wonder if they live locally. Oh, look, they even put a beer can in there. <laughs> I'm gonna guess more than one beer was drunk in the erection of this flagpole, but you know, maybe they also kind of left it as an offering to these poor fallen soldiers. You know, I'm sure Charles Thacker enjoyed a beer in his day. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep going counterclockwise because we gotta address 
the elephant in the room, which is this like a nose cone from an airplane? Is that what you call it even? I don't know. Wow, far out, look at that. That is, it's like the tip, <laughs> just the tip of some kind of aircraft, some kind of fighter jet maybe. How about that? That is pretty cool to see one of these things up close. You can see it's very weathered. It's been out here on top of this godforsaken mountain for who knows how long. And look at the fiberglass really coming apart, getting real fuzzy. And then this, I guess, gosh, what do you suppose was mounted on that? Some kind of gun or laser? <laughs> I mean, I figure that was the top and that was the bottom. And so whatever went in there, well, it, let's just say it probably didn't blow soap bubbles. <laughs> you know what I mean? But pretty cool to see this thing up close. Gosh, I wonder what's keeping it from blowing over. Maybe Carl and Billy did something to fix it. Or maybe it's just so heavy. I'll try to give you guys a peek inside. It's real hard to see though. It's real dark in there. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything holding out. I guess it's just real heavy. How about that? Oh gosh, there's all kinds of bits and bobs of old airplanes up here. I mean, if I had known any better, I'd think there was a plane crash up here. I wonder if that's what happened. I don't, I mean, I feel like if that's what happened, it would have said. I mean, I just went on Google Maps and randomly stumbled on this place because I was looking for a place to camp. I knew I was gonna be passing through this area late at night. I just needed a place. Oh gosh, <laughs> I saw something pretty funny over there. We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, I, I needed a place to camp. I thought, okay, let me find a spot outside Fallon. And then I saw this little pin on the map. I went, what? That looks interesting. And so I read the reviews, people talking about, oh, tough hike to get to the top, but uh, nobody said anything about a plane crash. So even though there's like an ungodly amount of aircraft debris up here, I don't think, well, maybe the, a plane did crash up here. I don't know. I kind of thought from what I read that it was just sort of a catch-all monument to fallen search and rescue airmen, I guess. Isn't that like you'd have a windsock on at an airfield? And then I don't know why there's this car door with a bunch of bullet holes in it. That's kind of scary. And it has like a Zodiac Killer logo on it. Yikes. Didn't the Zodiac Killer do that to one of his victims? He wrote a, on the car door. He drew a circle with a cross to it. It wasn't an X. It was a cross. But close enough. Kind of freaky. Uh, I can't even tell what kind of car this was. And I guess it doesn't really matter because we're not here. We're not here to poke around uh, old car doors. We're here to check out this uh, SAR monument, which I'm gonna have to bust out my drone in a minute because all, all this stuff says stuff. Uh, all these rocks are spelling things out. I don't know if we'll be able to read it from ground level. But yeah, look, here's a wheel landing gear from an aircraft. How about that? When's the last time you saw one of those just land on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere? Holy cow. Or that looks like some kind of air intake thing. I know everyone's probably laughing at me. Cause I'm an idiot when it comes to any of this kind of stuff. What do I know? <laughs> I just like weird stuff in the middle of nowhere and this certainly qualifies. Look, here's the glass shield from a cockpit. Holy cow. And now there's bullet holes in it, which might lead you to think that, oh my God, what if this cockpit saw combat? You know, what if the Red Baron strafed this thing? Okay, I know the Red Baron was a completely different era than this aircraft would have been operational in, but you know, indulge me. Or you know, like the Viet Cong, or I guess the Viet Cong didn't really have jets. Well, I don't know, the Russians, the Ruskies, maybe the Ruskies shot this thing up. Well, you'd be inclined to think that, but more realistically, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it was just some drunk yahoos, probably the same drunk yahoos that shot up that propane tank that's sitting in the lap of that crash test dummy back there which I'll get to in a minute. I just wanna crawl in this cockpit first so we can feel like what it would be like. <laughs> you know, what it would be like to be in one of these aircraft, you know, flying around. Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> actually, I've said this before, but I'll go ahead and say it again. I myself actually dated not one, but two Air Force pilots, uh, one of whom was a fighter jet pilot, so, I guess I know a little bit about, well, the type of, let's just say the type of man who's attracted to that line of work. And that's all I'll say about that. Okay, let's go check out this crash test dummy. Now, what in tarnation, what in the blue blazes is going on here? Okay, first of all, it looks like it's the other two wheels of that. Well, I thought it was a kid's car. Oh, what if it was a kid's airplane on wheels? Maybe that was the front wheels and this was the body because this is a teeny tiny, teeny tiny little aircraft i can't imagine this thing was a real airplane i don't know man what do you guys think i mean there is a 
It's like a, what do you call it when it's an airplane? It's not a VIN number, but it says aircraft number, blah, 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 part number, serial number. What? Was this an actual airplane? I love how that whoever positioned this thing, his hand is up to his eyes like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, like for real, oh no. His one leg is severely broken. The other leg's missing. Is this an old propane tank shot full of bullet holes sitting on his lap? I mean, or is it Boba Fett's helmet? <laughs> Golly, I would be making that face too. And then, oh my gosh, look, it looks like he's he was wearing a flight suit. I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, that's the zipper. And there's the, you can see the green. What is that made out of canvas? Or I don't know what they make those things out of. But anyway, you can see the material. I guess he was wearing a full olive drab flight suit. And it just got eaten away over time by the elements. Oh, that reminds me of like <laughs> the guys that I dated. Like, I think the one guy would like sometimes, oh, he, I didn't have time to change after work. So he'd still be wearing his flight suit. Cause you know how they say, ladies love a man in uniform. And I don't know, was it a turn on? A flight suit is basically just a big onesie. And my understanding that I got from one of the guys was, you know, I asked him, I go, what happens if you guys have to pee when you're up in the, if you're flying? And they said they just have to piss themselves. And then I go, what happens if you have to go number two? And he goes, well, you just try to not have to go number two. But I feel like we went to dinner one time with a, a buddy of his that was an active fighter pilot. And I was asking that guy all kinds of questions because the, the friend was actually cuter than the guy himself. And I kind of had like a chemistry, but you know, I'm dating the other guy. I'm not that kind of gal. Anyway, the, I was asking the other guy all about this stuff. And I want to say he told me some horrible story about I don't think it was him, somebody he knew that had a hangover, got explosive diarrhea while they were up in the cockpit, stuck in this friggin' flight suit. So I don't necessarily think a flight suit is very sexy at all. Anyway, I don't mean to make light of this monument to SAR, which I'm assuming is search and rescue, but again, I don't know. Uh, it's a very serious place, but you know, you can see the guys up here, they do have a sense of humor. They put this thing up here, which I'm still not sure if that's part of a little tiny airplane or what. Somebody will let us know in the comments. I'll bet you anything, there are some aviation buffs watching this video, military aviation buffs at that, they'll be able to fill us in. Wow, this site is even more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Oh my God, and the views are amazing too. We'll have to do a panorama from the edge up there after we finish poking around the site. Anyway, uh, before I fly the drone, there's a few more bits of detritus we need to check out. Okay, all throughout these giant letters, which I guess are visible from the air, there's bits and bobs of, looks like old crashed aircraft to me. Look at this thing. It's like a little motor or something, but it's got this little lever still on it. How about that? Oh my goodness. Wonder what that was. Or what about this? It's part of a jet engine, isn't it? Here's another pretty sizable chunk of a fuselage. What's this? Gosh, there's just stuff laying everywhere up here. This is so interesting and it's cool that it's so inaccessible that I guess these aviation vultures haven't gotten up here. You know, the guys like to steal little bits of crashed planes and then go, I don't know, have intimate relations with them or put it on a shelf in their man cave. I'm not really sure what they do with them. Well, those guys haven't been up here yet. Wow, look at the blades on this thing. Gosh. Yikes, that'd cut your finger off. Whew. Okay, it looks like there's a few more painted rocks here that we didn't check out and I don't want to pass these poor guys up. Killed in action. The brave and the free. America remembers EODG Paul Darga. Born in May of 72, died in August. August 22nd, 2006. 34 years old. How sad. That must have been like, what, 06? Is that like the Iraq War? Something to do over there in the Middle East. Terrible. And there's a rock next to him for, oh, this is a, he was a security guard. End of watch was 19 September of last year, 2022. Caleb Brown, MA1 Caleb Brown. And it looks like he's got a US Navy Security Forces badge painted there in the middle. Golly, I wonder what happened to this poor guy. It always makes me sad when I see that end of watch. They use that when cops die, because my sister, a little known fact, was married to a police officer and he was a cool guy. And he, after they divorced, unfortunately he was killed in the line of duty and so, we went to, he had a big police funeral. In fact, Kamala Harris <laughs> gave the eulogy. Anyway, uh, it said end of watch on all the materials. And it just made me really sad because 
you know, it's just, a, I don't know, it's a very poetic way of putting it. And he was a great guy, as I'm sure Caleb Brown was. And then there's one more here. It, oh, here's a medical one. Oh, look at that. He's got the little, look at that cute little, I mean, not cute, but fancy little medical insignia. In memory of Chief Hospital Corpsman Matthew J. Bourgeois, killed in action March 27th, 2002. Oh, man, that definitely had to be Iraq War, right? Isn't that like right when the Iraq War started? Just terrible to think of these medics. I mean, these guys that go over there to try to save lives. Oh, there's something like, I mean, they're all very sad, but there's something to me especially sad when a medic dies. But to all these poor guys that are memorialized up here, well, let's just all say thank you for your service. You know, no matter what you think of war and the point of certain wars, and maybe there is no point to any war, these guys still died doing what they felt was right. So you gotta give them a lot of respect for that. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to this lonely little SAR monument that we can see from ground level. But before we try to get an aerial view and read some of these names that are written here, let's take a quick look at this amazing view. <laughs> like I said, there's a pretty impressive panorama from the top of this hilltop. I mean, you can see miles and miles. I didn't even realize there's a lake over there. Okay, so the Naval Air Station is over there, I think. I think that's the runway. Isn't that? Oh, hold on. Yeah, I feel like the runway is like right over there somewhere. And then that's the little town of Fallon. And then, well, heading east, it just pretty much goes into the void. And I mean the void. If you watched a series of videos I made a few years ago, summer of 2020, I drove US 50, the loneliest road in America, all the way from where it, uh, well, the loneliest road is just the name given to that portion of US 50. I think from Fallon is where it starts until you get to, gosh, I think Ely. And I don't remember how many miles it is, but it's a very, very desolate stretch of highway. There ain't much going on on it. Well, coming to find out there's all kinds of stuff going on on it. You just gotta get out of the car and hike a little and you'll find all kinds of stuff. Which I also found in my videos. If you watch that series of videos, I found all kinds of crazy stuff on the so-called loneliest highway. And that's why I always go loneliest highway. I don't think US 50 is actually that lonely of a highway. If you wanna see the loneliest road in America, I recommend driving US 6 between Tonopah and Ely. That puts US 50 to shame. Anyway, let's see if we can get an overview of this site and read some of the inscriptions. I'm particularly curious about one thing. If you go on Google Maps and you read the reviews of this site and you look at the photos, well, a lot of the photos, it shows that it says JAG, J-A-G in really big letters. But then some of the photos, it says S-A-R. So like, did they come up here at some point and redo the monument? And if so, why? I mean, gosh, these things look like, I was gonna say they look like they've been here for a long time, but I guess not necessarily. It's just rock sitting on top of this little mini dry lake bed, which I think is so cool. There's a little tiny dry lake bed on top of this mountain. Look, somebody wrote peace. Some hippie came up here. Some anti-war communist. This one says, Nemo. Look, there's a giant H there. Oh, isn't that meant for like a helicopter landing? I mean, is a helicopter meant to land on that lava field there? Maybe that's how they brought all this debris up here. They just took a chopper up here. That'd be a lot easier than hiking up the way I did. Wow. I don't know how that works with helicopters. Can you land a chopper on rough rock like this? I mean, I guess so. I did take a chopper into Death Valley once and we landed in the Saline Valley, which is pretty rocky. So I guess if you could land there, you could land here. And on what I'm theorizing is a helicopter landing pad, it does say BKR, Baker, I guess. Huh. Remember Charlie, remember Baker. They left their childhood by every acre. Remember that Billy Joel song? And we would all go down together. Actually, a really... Depressing song. Sometimes I like depressing songs. Okay, I'll stop desecrating this sacred site with my ungodly caterwauling and try to get an aerial view. Wow, 
how about that? That was pretty wild. I mean, I didn't even know if I'd be able to fly this thing here, but the, it, the little drone software, like the kind of drone I have, you have to use your phone as the controller. Well, when I started it up, it goes, caution, you are flying in proximity to Naval Fallon Naval Air Weapons Station. But it didn't say I couldn't do it. I just had to check a box saying I assume all liability. I suppose if my drone had caused the crash of some fighter jet, uh, I would be responsible for the repair costs. Oh. Fortunately, nothing like that happened. I wasn't flying very high anyway. I probably only went up like 20 feet. I just wanted to get an overview of all this. What do they call those? Intaglios when it's rock art? I mean, I don't know. Some of you might quibble with this being called art, but you know, I'll call it intaglios. Pretty interesting to see all the names of all the different people. Now, I don't know if those are SAR, which we confirmed that it said SAR, not JAG. So I'm not really sure what the story with that was, but maybe these were all people who did search and rescue. Or is it just the name of people who come up here? I mean, I'm certainly not going to be so bold as to write my name up here. I have nothing to do with the Navy, nothing to do with SAR. In fact, the pilots that I dated weren't even in the Navy, they were in the Air Force, and one of them was in the Chair Force. <laughs> I know I got some blowback, I said that in a video once, and this woman got very offended because her son was in the Air Force. Well, the reason I called it the Chair Force with the, the one guy was, he was a drone pilot, okay? He just went up and worked at Creech Air Force Base outside Vegas, and he sat in a trailer all day with a joystick controlling a drone clear across the world in Yemen or someplace like that. And it's not to say that it wasn't a terrible job, it was very stressful probably very psychologically damaging because you know those guys that work up there they just go to they go to war every day from nine to five and then they go back to vegas and they go bowling they go to the bar and well let's just say the stresses of that job give me some insight into his personality quirks okay before we hike down uh i did notice what appears to be a i mean to me it looks like a pull-up bar you tell me why would this mysterious contraption be erected up here at the site of this search and rescue memorial. I mean, my understanding is that the armed forces can be kind of a pissing contest, like who can do the most pull-ups? Is that what this is here for? I mean, it's about the right height. I can barely reach it. Oh, I could reach it, but if I reached it, it wouldn't do me any good because I cannot do a pull-up to save my life. I have very poor upper body strength. But I don't know. I mean, is that here just so that the guys who come up here can do show off strength competitions and again i don't mean to you know disparage guys in the military there's some fine folks in the military i just say that because the one guy that i dated i think it was like his naming ceremony you know how they give you a call sign like in top gun his tom cruise's call sign was maverick and then the other guy was goose you know they get these nicknames well so he his i guess i better not say his nickname because it would identify him anyway he, they gave him kind of a slightly well they wanted to give him a slightly mean-spirited nickname but they ended up giving him a very boring nickname that was based on his last name but at the ceremony for it and i hesitate to call it a ceremony because i i want to say it was i think it was at one of his superiors houses in vegas like one of the higher-ups like the colonel or whoever your squad leader is i'm not sure how it works they had to do all these like hazing rituals like that included I just remember he burned his face really bad because he had to drink a shot of Everclear that was on fire. Or there was some weird thing where there was a flaming shot of Everclear on top of a glass of vodka that he had to drink. I don't remember the details. All I know is that he got like second or third degree burns all over his chin. Dun da da dun da da dun 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 da da dun da da dun. Wow, look at those guys flying in formation. This is badass, man. This hilltop is not only cool as a you know memorial but it's a really good place to do plane spotting i wonder if these guys are going to come in for a landing at the naval air weapon station well maybe they're just going to buzz the town of you know they're probably going to buzz fallon high school it's probably cheerleading practice right now they're going to fly down real low over that football field <laughs> just kidding i'm sure they're just banking and then they're going to come in and do a beautiful smooth landing which is awesome and that's what i hope i can do i'm going to Hike back down this mountain. One last look at the site before we head down. And now it's time to make my way down this very treacherous, and I'm not kidding, hillside to my car. And if I happen to fall down, 
<laughs> well, guess what? We can all go down together. Mm -hmm.